I am thrilled about today's discussion. Number one, because this organizing our stuff, organizing, downsizing, whatever you want to call it, is one of the most popular topics on our platform and um, and leads into some really great discussions. But um, uh, I was introduced to Kathy Nelson, who literally wrote the book on photo organizing, and she has tons of resources and a nationwide network that she's going to share with us today. But what's interesting about this is that we've done a few broad-based discussions on what to do with your stuff. And I'll drop those into chat in case you didn't see those. But what I like about today's discussion is we're going to focus on one um, element of that, which I know in my household is really confusing. And that is, how do we organize our photos? And um, so I'm delighted to welcome Kathy Nelson to the uh, stage, who is the author of Photo Organizing Made Easy, Going from Overwhelmed to Overjoyed, and also the founder of the Photo Managers. And, and Kathy, don't let me forget, you had the generous offer of giving away two of your books. We're going to give one away at the beginning, right after we get to know you, and then we'll give another one away at the end. And so I'm going to load up the uh, the wheel of names here, one of my favorite things to do on these online meetings. But the um, so Kathy, before we dive into our discussion and you share all your great resources with us, let's get to know you a little bit better. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what led to this unique career path. Oh my goodness. Well, my name is Kathy Nelson and I'm the CEO and founder of the Photo Managers. And I've always been that person that loved photos, right? I always had the camera in my hand. I remember uh, you know, my first point and shoot camera. I remember uh, I was always, you know, I was the photography person for our high school yearbook. And I was just always passionate about how photos could tell stories. And so that's a passion of mine I've always had. And then over many years discovered that people had similar passions, but were overwhelmed with all their photos. And when people started asking me for help, like, could you would you make me a photo album or would you uh, help me get my photos from this memory card to my computer? I started realizing that this is becoming much harder. You know, in the early days, we used to bring our two rolls of film or our rolls of film to our 24 hour photo lab. And then we'd wait in the car, you know, or we'd get in the car and we'd look at our pictures and we'd go home. And that was that. Right. Um, but today it's so much more complex. So I'm excited to share my insights on how you can kind of get a handle on all that today. All right. Well, let's not delay. We're going to dive into this. But before we do that, let's yeah, I love have this. some I love fun. The wheel of fun. And, uh, <laughs> folks, uh, just so you know, we've had close to 300 people register for the um, uh, today's discussion, which is why you can't see any of the names on the wheel of names. But we're going to see one lucky name here in a moment. And I'm going to make sure to write their name down so that we... Uh, get this to them. So Sylvia Ellis or Elias is our big winner for the first book. But if you weren't lucky enough to be named Sylvia Elias right now, um, you'll have another chance at the very end. And um, Sylvia, we'll I'll send you an email introducing you to Kathy, and then she can make arrangements to get the book to you. So with that, Kathy, I'm going to duck behind the curtain here. I'm going to let you take it away. But I also want to make sure that um, everybody in the audience knows to hit us up with questions, comments, thoughts. And um, Kathy, if you want to take a few breaks, I'll let you know if there's any relevant questions that came in based on what you've already said. Yeah, so I agree, Steve. So go ahead and write your questions in the, in the chat or the Q&A, and we'll make sure we get to as many as we can. And um, I know people have a lot of questions. So let me just uh, get ready here. Let me share my screen. And I'm going to, um, oops, stop my video here for a minute. Since it's easier not to look at myself when I do these things and go into slideshow mode. <laughs> so, uh, well, welcome. To, um, I love this opening, right? If you're, uh, my goal today is help you to go from feeling overwhelmed to overjoyed by the sheer volumes uh, of photos that you have to empower you with those steps. Because first of all, let me tell you, 
you're not alone if you are here because you feel like you have too many photos. There are over uh, 1.7 trillion printed photos that we that they estimate have been taken. That's um, it's actually a billion and a billion digital photos are being taken now every year. So it's it's incomprehensible. These numbers almost become meaningless, right? After a while, because who can who can even grasp that? Uh, so again, you're not alone in that. So as I mentioned, I'm Kathy Nelson, the CEO and founder of the Photo Managers. We are a global educational association that offers classes, an annual conference, professional certification, and a supportive, engaged community for this growing career of professional photo organizers. Think about it. At one time, you didn't ever imagine hiring a personal trainer uh, or an executive coach to help you. Uh, same thing with photo organizers, right? People need assistance. And so I support that community. Some of them will be here answering your questions in the, in the chat as well. I'm also the author of two books, Photo Organizing Made Easy, Going from Overwhelmed to Overjoyed, and also the Business Roadmap for Professional Photo Organizers. For those who are interested in this as a profession, because it's a growing need, and a lot of uh, retired folks have been doing it also as a side gig. Uh, but most importantly, I'm passionate about sharing this message because I always start with the why. Why does this matter? Why, are, why did so many people sign up for this, right? And I use this quote over and over again. There have been great societies that did not have the wheel, but no societies did not tell stories. Our photos tell the stories of our lives. They're our connection to our family, our friends, the past, and a message to the future. But if your photos are completely disorganized and you can't find the photos you care about because they're lost in a sea of digital data or in a box under your bed, you can't tell the stories you care about. Now to bring this home, here's a great example of a photo story that will tell you a lot about our family history, what we value and the memories we care about. And it's told in just two photos. My husband is the youngest in that black and white photo. He grew up in Daytona Beach, Florida. And every summer his family would take a road trip in the old beat up station wagon, pulling a pop-up trailer throughout the 1960s. Their goal was to get their family to see all lower 48 states. We marvel today at how his family did that. Uh, no air conditioning, no seat belts for kids, right? But it's a cherished memory in that family. Both his sisters continued that tradition when they married. And I always joke that our marriage wouldn't have made it if I didn't say yes to that same tradition. We did it a little differently. We only had two kids and we would fly to different states and rent a car and check off the states on a big roadmap. The photo on the right is the photo we took when we made it to all 48 states. So now 25 years later, my kids and our nieces and nephews of, uh, are doing the same thing. The quote by Mark Twain was told to Larry by his parents and we taught it to our kids and they are gonna pass it to their kids. Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness, right? That's just a small example of why telling stories about a few photos is so important. But when your photo collection is a disorganized mess, it's really difficult to accomplish that, right? So today I'm gonna to share with you a high, low, high level overview of the five steps that professional photo organizers use and then we'll dig into the most time consuming but a critically important part of this, which we call the sorting process. So these five steps can work in your mind, both for printed photos and digital photos. Again, answer your questions in the chat and I'll make sure we can get to as many of them as we go along. So the first step is, first of all, you need to have a goal. What is your end goal with your photo organizing project? Are you interested in passing down a photo legacy? Are you downsizing and want to pass on photos to the next generation? Take your time to think about this because knowing your goal and your reason why will help you stay motivated. A lot of people think this is a weekend project or something that's uh, when I retire someday or someday I'm going to get to this and that someday never comes. And I think a lot of times because the goal is almost too big, like you're, you're just thinking, I just got to manage all of those photos right at once. Uh, but once you have that goal, the next thing that you really need to do is to collect, try and gather all your photos in one place and take inventory so you know what you have. Uh, actually, we have a handout and I can uh, send this again to Steve, but if you go to the photomanagers.com books uh, dash downloads, we do have a handout where you can kind of keep track of this process. But you want to make a note of this. I have three hard drives, four iPhones, five boxes of photos, seven photo albums dating from these years. Uh, and if you have everything in one place, it's much easier to visualize what you have. I actually did this for myself recently. I had, I've preached this 
you know, the shoemaker has no shoes, right? But, and I hadn't collected all my photos into one place until just recently. And I'm so thrilled. I have a spreadsheet and I actually know how many albums I have, how many boxes of photos I still have that need to be sorted and organized. And it was really helpful to just gather it all in one place and just, just gather inventory, right? The third step that takes the most time, that's what we're going to talk about in a little bit, is the sorting process. And I'm going to take you through what I call the ABCs of photo organizing. The fourth step is what's called save. And that's the importance of backing up so your photos are protected from natural or digital disasters. And then the last and most fun part is the sharing, sharing your most uh, precious moments with friends and families through photo books or slideshows on digital photo frames. This is what it's all about, right? It's those stories that you want to pass down to the next generation. That's what's motivating you to get through to start this project. So in just a minute here, before I start in quickly into the ABCs, Steve, is there anything, um, any questions quickly that have come up? Oh, let me see here. Um, there are a lot of questions, but I think we should just, let's go through this. Um, okay. And then you, we'll you did address that you're going to be talking about managing digital and print photos, right? Oh, no. So I'm focusing today mostly on printed. So they're almost two different topics in a way. The, okay. eight, the, the five steps I just shared are relevant for whether you're working with digital or printed. But for right now, I'm really going to be talking more about printed photos. Okay. I'm thinking about just this, who this audience was and, um, and what you needed to know. Got it. And then, oh, um, Arlene asked, can you say the Mark Twain quote slowly? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. I did kind of said that too quickly, didn't I? Hang on. Um, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. I love it. Great. Yeah. All right. So get back going, and then we'll 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 get through all these questions here. Okay. So this strategy, the ABCs, is something that um, I created years ago when I was trying to help clients visualize the process. And sometimes just a good acronym can be really helpful. So some of the things that you're going to want to need if you're going to be organizing your printed photos again is a, a tools such as a dental floss or a craft spatula. That'll help you get those photos that are in here into those old magnetic albums and they're having a hard time getting them out. That can help. You want to have a notebook and maybe a camera so you can start taking notes and taking um, remembering where photos are, different things like that gloves and a mask, because a lot of times if we've had our photos in the garage, the basements, they actually can get a lot of mold on them and dust. And so it can be, um, it can be troublesome if you start uh, going through lots of, just a lot of dust will come up and things like that. So we recommend that you have those things. Sticky notes and index cards so that you, again, you can start making notes because the goal isn't to keep going through the photos over and over again, but to make some notes about you know, who's in these photos? When were these, when was this picture taken? Uh, boxes, uh, non-archival are okay when I talk in a minute here about the ABCs and a garbage bag, because yes, we're going to talk about, yes, you can actually throw away your photos. And also from a digital perspective, you absolutely should be de deleting photos from your iPhone or from your Android phone on a regular basis, because we have way, way too many photos today. Okay. So let's get started on the ABCs. So the acronym, does, so the A means ask yourself as you're going through your, your photos, is this photo album worthy? Those are the pictures that are the best of the best. Those are the ones that are going to be belong in an album, whether you actually are going to put them back in an album, doesn't matter, but they're the memories that you would mourn deeply if you lost. And we see this all the time with, late, you know, with the hurricanes and tornadoes and floods, like once the news story, and once we know our pets and our people are safe, right? What are most people most devastated about losing? It's going to be their photos or cherished uh, items and things that they care most about. So these are the photos that you're going to want to scan, back up, share, and display. And it means, uh, again, it doesn't mean you're going to put them into albums. It means that they're album worthy. So when you come across those photos, you're going to have like ideally your uh, different, you're going to be doing piles or you'll have, you know, different bins set up and you're going to put those photos in the A photo in the A pile with a sticky note. When you're working with digital photos, I can mention that you can also create an, a folder or something in an album and you can you know, slide them into there. But this is again, more focused on printed photos. So then 
the B photos, right? Those are the ones that support the A photos, but you're not sure you want to keep. They're the extra, extras. And it's so difficult when you go through piles of photos to decide, is this an A photo or a B photo, right? We all know that. Or whose eyes are open in this photo? Whose eyes are closed in that photo? There's are the ones that you, uh, we say, put them back into the B photo, into the B pile and that you can archive them for safekeeping, but you don't necessarily have to spend the money to scan all those photos, right? If you're not gonna be, you don't need them scanned digitally if they're not your A photos. And I always joke sometimes, you can put a note on this, in top of this bin and say to the person who opens this in the future, you feel free to throw these out. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Because how many, you, how many people you can raise your hand or say, yes, me, in this audience have inherited boxes or bins of photos from somebody in your family and you don't know who the people are on the photos but you feel you just can't bring yourself to throw them away i will admit i have an elderly aunt who passed away a few years ago i've been doing this for many years and i'd always say auntie rose you promised you don't have any more photos no kathy no kathy i promise i have no more photos i've given you all the family photos really have you promised oh yes 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 of course, after she passed away and we went through her home, what did I find? I found like so many bags and boxes of photos. It was crazy. And I'm so devastated that I don't know who the people are in those photos. And um, so have I thrown those away yet? No, I'm just like a lot of people, but I will. And um, so I just don't want that to happen to other people. But if she had given me permission, if she had said, Kathy, if you find photos, go ahead and throw them away. It might have made it easier than it is when I'm, I'm still holding on to those photos. So that brings us to the C, right? Yes, you can throw your photos in the trash can. You can re, uh, your collection is probably filled with doubles, triples, and really, really bad photos, right? If your photos don't fall into one of the previous categories, that A or B, it's a C photo. I encourage you to be brutal here and set a goal to fill the garbage pan with those. Our rule of thumb is to try and eliminate 80% of your photos and keep your favorite 20%. Just those photos I showed you, those, that story, I just using those two photos. I mean, think about what I was able to share about family values. Now, we have lots of photos of all those states that we've kept, and I wouldn't want to eliminate those. But we don't need all the photos that I took when we traveled to all of those uh, 48 states. And we did get them to Alaska as well. So they actually got it to, they have to get themselves to Hawaii. Um, and so some ideas of some of the photos that you can, that we consider see photos too, are going to be landscape photos, sunsets, uh, travel photos. So often think about it this way, when you're traveling, it's, it's a joy to take photos, right? It's, it's a joy. If you've gone to Hawaii for the first time to take pictures of, of the flowers and the, and the ocean and, and the beauty around you, or you go to Italy and you're in Rome and you take 25 photos of the Colosseum and a hundred photos of, uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, maybe, or whatever, right? But those photos, ideally, you know, Hawaii will look similar. And ideally, you know, you only need one photo, maybe, of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. You don't need all 25. So we encourage people to eliminate those types of photos. It's the people photos that you want to keep. And that brings me to the S. Does your photo tell a story? Those are the pictures that play a significant role because it illustrates uh who, you know, the things that you care most about, right? A picture of a single tree in the backyard may seem meaningless unless it's a, now a full-grown sapling that your great-grandfather had planted before he passed away. The S photos are the gems within your collection, the photos that matter and tell a story. And depending on what works best for you, you can put those in a special container to review later or immediately write down some of those stories on an index card or sticky note that you collected prior to the beginning. And so I love this too. It could be, and this can be subjective, right? What you consider an S photo. Maybe there's a photo with your dad making a silly face. And I might look at that and think, oh, well, that's not a greatly composed photo. But you know, that face is the face that you remember. It used to drive you crazy maybe when you were a teenager. And now you would do anything to see your dad make that silly face again, right? So your photos tell stories of your lives. That's why we take them. And so those are the photos that you really want to make sure you have scanned and saved into the future. Now, I'm going to talk about you can break the rules. So many, I've been doing this for so long and so many people have all these rules in their head. Again, you can drop a note in the chat, like what are some rules you have? Or uh, like one, don't throw photos away. Or uh, a common one is, whoops, Sorry, I gotta go backwards. No, why is it doing? Hang on, I jumped ahead of myself. Ah. 
this way. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, this one really throws people, the chronological order versus events. I'm gonna talk here for a minute. Um, a lot of us think that we have to organize our photos in chronological order, you know, and that's what can really throw people. Some people have spent their lifetime keeping their photos organized, but most people we have discovered have not. They're usually in those boxes and bins. And so if you are a chronological person, it's okay to keep your photos in chronological order. But if you're that person who didn't keep your photos in chronological order, here's a way to think about breaking the rule. We think, I always say that we live in time order, right? So today is uh, Wednesday, tomorrow will be Thursday, right? The month of J April, which is almost over already. It'll next be May. And so we think and live in chronological time order, but we remember by events. We remember by, you know, Mother's Day is coming, right? I, I'm going to remember past Mother's Days. I'm going to be, it doesn't matter if I'm looking at photos of Mother's Day from, you know, 1997 or 1964, right? I'm whatever if we celebrated Mother's Day or Memorial Day is coming up or Fourth of July, right? So we like to encourage people sometimes to think about your photos in terms of how you remember and what are the events of your life. So you can organize your photos in, uh, these are the people we love and care about, or we're a family that love to travel and you keep all your photo travel photos in one kind of place. We're a family that love to compete. This is a good example of that as well. A lot of times if say you had a, a kid in soccer, maybe, and you're, it's so normal in a chronological way is here is Johnny at age five and here he is at six and seven and eight, you know, kind of, it's not that interesting, but what if you had your photos organized in a way that here's Johnny when he got his first soccer ball at three, here he is at like eight. And now he's, you know, hitting the header in the goal at 13 or, you know, in his high school um, soccer experience, right? It's much more interesting to look at the transition like that than it is to watch, you know, go page by page or photo by photo over time. So that's that idea of why organizing your photos in events and things that you care about, um, favorite albums and things like that makes it make, can make this so much easier. And for a lot of people, this is like an aha moment. Oh my gosh, I can break the rules. I don't have to do it the same way every time. So that's my quick overview of the uh, ABCs. Are there questions there before I can keep going on with some other uh, some other information there, Steve? You know, uh, Kathy, there are so many questions. I'm afraid we would get <laughs> our rail. Uh, we would uh, it, we'd go on and we wouldn't get to the rest of your slides. So I think it it's a bit keep the questions coming, folks. And then, okay, because I don't have much more here, so we'll okay, we'll keep. It, I'm, I'm not surprised. So I hopefully I opened up your minds to think about things, and then it's better. So here's some resources. If you like, uh, I do a monthly news, a weekly newsletter. It's called Kathy's Picks, and it's where I put some inspirational things and just some photo organizing tips. You're welcome to sign up to uh, to that by going to the photomanagers.com. Kathy's Picks. We have a private Facebook group called the Photo Organizing Hub. And there we have professional photo organizers who answer people's questions in real time. And I think there's over 8,000 people now in that group. So you're welcome to join that group to, you know, especially if we can't get to all your questions today. We also do Save Your Photos Month, which is the last, uh, every September, it's called Save Your Photos Month, where we do a whole month of mini uh, courses that you can watch taught by professionals. You can register for that. And of course, we have my book, which you can uh, order online on Amazon. And then also consider hiring a pro, right? So I am, we have certified photo organizers. They've been certified by the photo managers. We actually, Steve will drop a little, um, I think a PDF there in the chat where we've listed all the members that are in the, we know that we have members here on this call probably from all over the country, but specifically certified photo organizers in the, in the region of the country that in the Pacific, I mean, in the Atlantic, um, on the East coast there. So uh, these are people who have a passion for helping you with your photos. So I definitely recommend if you get stuck, you can always hire somebody. And now I think that's it. We're going to go to questions. So I can come off. Um, let me turn my video back on and stop sharing. All right. Well, uh, that was great. And it primed the pump for a lot of great questions. So let's start rattling through them here. And I know that there's some of your photo managers. In fact, the um, uh, next month, we're gonna be featuring one of your uh, folks that went through your yep. certification, Rachel Jenkins. Mm -hmm. I know Rachel and some other folks are in the audience. So feel free to throw your ideas into chat, folks, because we save the chat 
It's with the recording. Um, if you've got tips or ideas, um, that's great. Um, so let's see, Mary Chabot asks, are there any strategies for unprocessed film or unprinted negatives? Uh, un unprocessed film, there are a couple places, I'd have to Google that quick, that still, people still, well, you can still get your film developed. So I highly recommend that you get that, that okay. film developed. And uh, cause gosh, can you imagine what might be on there? It could be just oh, be amazing. Scary. There yeah. was a, uh, yeah. And then the negatives, um, if you, if you, because you have negatives and they never were turned into print, you can scan your negatives. So you can have those negatives scanned and then you have a, the digital uh, backup copy. And then if you see something in that negative that you really want printed, then you'll be able to have those printed. And uh, Mary, I just typed into Google and um, I got like this MPix mail-in film developing, you know. Um, oh, MPix is a good company too. Yep. Oh, okay, good. Well, that's what I was hoping to get is an endorsement or some kind of confirmation. So I'm going to drop uh, MPix into, uh, into chat there for everybody who might be in the same boat. And um, boy, we could do a whole follow up on what Mary finds on that undeveloped film, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mindy says, will you be discussing digital photos? I have over 10,000 on my phone and even more on my computer. I know you're not really going to be discussing digital today, but any tips and, and Rachel, I know she's listening in. So maybe in May, Rachel can focus on some of the, uh, the digital strategies, but I'm in yeah, the same. It's, it is a, it's a very, I mean, so, so am I, we all are right. And our members are, I mean, that's why this is such a growing need is it's going to be very similar. You're going to want, you want to create a digital hub on your computer, ideally, and you want to, get all your digital photos also into one place. And then you, then we do this where a lot of times you want to eliminate a lot of the duplicates, right? So a lot of our, what will happen is you can, there's something called deduplication software where you can eliminate. So, so many of those photos are not are duplicates or, you know, you screen burst and things like that. So, um, but again, definitely having a plan and a strategy in place is, is key in terms of that and delete, delete, delete. Got it. And and somebody I saw in chat, somebody was saying that when you were talking about getting rid of the photos, is, is that it's the equivalent of yep. deleting on digital. And so. I can see in the chat there, uh, somebody mentioned the two different programs that are, one is for Mac and one is for PC. And yeah. um, and they won't delete those photos unless you give it permission. So you don't have to worry about it, like, like taking away your photos on you. Um, so that's a quick tip for digital photos. And uh, somebody says, please plan a future session on digital photos. And and you know what? Uh, Rachel's in the audience right now. And so Rachel, let's just make sure on May 23rd that we really address some digital uh, discussions. And uh, I think we'll have Steve, a lot. Of if you want to have us back, I mean, there's there's kids artwork we can talk about. There's memorabilia. It's, wow. proper, you know, there's so many different pieces of this because, again, it's really your whole memory collection. So we're focused on photos today. But photo, how about old home movies that you haven't had developed or you haven't digitized and you haven't seen in decades on those little camcorder tapes or VCR tapes? I mean, there's just an endless. No. Uh, Let's see. Somebody says, my grandfather was a photographer in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Recent photos are found. No one in the family knew where to begin or how to find the resources and the people to guide the family on how to preserve and protect these special keepsakes and memories. Any guidance or does your organization provide these kinds of services? And then any suggestions would be helpful. So meaningful. Um, uh, so this is what they do with the their his grandfather's printed photo collection. Yeah. Some recommendations uh, you want to make sure you get the photos into our into an archival storage of some sort. And there's a company called Archival Methods, which we recommend. They're out of Rochester, New York, and they have some great. They have a resource guide. So you want to uh, definitely make sure that they're in. You know, they're not. There's not a lot of humidity and things like that, so that they're safe. You definitely want to have those photos scanned. So that would be my. That's your number one way to have them backed up. I would recommend finding a local professional photo organizer in your area. They'll probably come in. A lot of them offer pickup and delivery services. So you're not putting them in the mail and taking that risk of them getting lost. Um, and so once they're scanned, then you have that digital backup copy as well. And then you can share that with, uh, with your family and things like that. So those are the two thoughts off. To, uh, one is make sure that you have them in, if they're that precious to you, that they're in archival safe storage, not in just, you know, 
inexpensive boxes that you bought like at the great company. and i dropped archival methods into uh chat there for everybody and then but you know piggybacking on that because i'm in the same boat we've got these boxes of these photos from you know our family but you don't know anybody in the photo and it's like the, you, you you might know the farmhouse but um that's a tough thing to do because it's like you feel like you're holding on to history here but at the end of the day what am i going to do with this and i i we've been scanning them in so that we can just get rid of the printed photos but it's yeah i mean that's an option as well in from one box to the other yeah, you don't, you definitely, and that's where that sorting process of like, you know, you don't necessarily, you know, if there's a lot of times they're the same thing, right? They're duplicates or they're, they, they look similar. So maybe keep, you know, five or six of those best photos of the family, people that you don't know, because with AI, with, you know, artificial intelligence and all, I mean, there are, I think the technology is coming where we might be able to start to identify things like that. There is a company that has a software called Related Faces, and they're able to actually identify people in photos that people don't know um, using artificial intelligence. And so it's, Holy so the cow. technology is really coming, but um, so, I, but I would eliminate a good number of them. Same thing with like my aunt's photos, right? I'll probably keep five or six of those, but I don't need, and then people that get into genealogy and stuff as you start, uh, you know, maybe you get into the, the family search and you start to load some of those photos, you know, people might be relate, they might somebody else may have been doing work on your family line that you don't even know is in your family line. And it's yeah, fascinating. No, that's, that's cool stuff. I dropped in related faces. Um, it, okay. Is there a service that will scan photos and preserve them for family groups? Like what, um, do you have any of the scanning companies that you send people to? Uh, we really, I mean, some you'd have to do your research on the scanning companies. Again, most professional photo managers offer scanning as one of their services. I know Rachel does where she there in Baltimore and we gave that list of people partly because they're going to take the time to really, um, I mean, some of the scanning services, what they tend to do is maybe, uh, you know, it's a kind of a race to the bottom in terms of pricing and they might just scan everything and send it back to you without asking, uh, putting, adding the metadata, which is like adding the information behind the photos and things like that. So, um, so that's kind of how I, we recommend it. Most most members are set up to do that and they care deeply about your photos. It will ask you really good questions and making sure that you're getting the right service for what you need. Yeah, and and again, I, I dropped the, the PDF flyer of the Mid-Atlantic members that she's uh, referring to here, but there's members all over the nation. And, and the, in the world. Know, so you can go to the, yeah, go to the photomanagers.com, hire a pro. And you can find somebody. I mean, we I just certified somebody right before this call in South Africa. She's a so we have members in Australia, UK, Netherlands, Brazil, South Africa. And um, because people care so deeply about their photos, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Okay. And then just to reiterate one of the questions here, it says, so what are the services that your company provides and what are the costs? And then also can you talk about the professional organizing opportunity and how to charge for services? Okay, so, so this sounds like it might be somebody interested in getting into this profession. Right. Yeah, so I know people get confused by it. So the photo managers, we are more like a trade association. You should think of us more as we're the governing body that supports small business entrepreneurs who have started businesses offering photo organizing, photo management services. And we started that, it's, we've been in existence for almost 14 years and it's gone from, oh my gosh, it's a thing to, oh my gosh, I need you, right? So my company, the photo managers, does not offer any photo organizing services, but our members that have been, that we uh, work with, that have been certified, we've established best practices. They're the folks that you can find that will do this work with you. And I started that because I started my own business doing this and people kept asking me to teach them how to do it. It's a, it's a crazy success story of, you know, an idea that's grown. And we just had our 11th annual educational conference. We had members from all over the world. I saw pictures of that on LinkedIn. There's look amazing. Um, so now the certificate, can you just briefly give us an overview of the certification steps in the process? Yeah, because so if you're interested in this as a side gig or something that you want to do, um, you join the photo managers. We have lots of training because technology keeps changing and you need assistance and you need a community of people just like you. 
We're not competitive. We're very collaborative. There's way more clients than there ever are photo managers. And so that's our overall uh, philosophy. And so certification, I learned, figured early on that, you know, your photos are precious to you. You don't want to turn your photos over to a stranger. So we have a strong code of ethics about confidentiality, teaching, you know, what's the best practice in terms of scanning at what DPI, all those things. So our members go through that, go through that course, and then they document, they go work with a client. They have to document that process from start to finish. They provide their references. We check their references. We call the client, make sure that they did a good job. And then they have an interview with me. At that point, they become certified and they're listed on our directory. So that's the certification process. So you know that you're getting somebody who has invested in their learning and interest and invested in the time. So you're confident, really. That's meant to be a way for us to vet, um, vet people. Because your photos, videos that people do, home, videos, home movies, so many uh, make photo books for people. Uh, there's so many different services that members can provide, but what matters is th those are your photos, right? And your home movies and the things you care most about. So, okay. And then um, uh, I know we talked about this a little bit, but can you, you we uh, just share? So, how can old negatives have the image printed? How how does one do this? They have so the negative has to be scanned. Okay. And then. When, so once the negative scanned, then you'll see it on the computer and then you would send it, um, you would save it as a JPEG or a, you know, a, a, it would be saved. And then you would send it uh, to a printing um, company and lots of companies, you know, printing is coming back in a big way. It's been really interesting. It's kind of like the, you know, the, the pendulum swings uh, in life. And I think including the younger generation, uh, my nephew is in his early thirties. He, he only uses film cameras and but there, so printing is actually coming back in a big way. And I think people realize that they want the tactile experience of holding things, but it's critical to have a digital copy of everything because that's your best backup, you know, in terms of saving it into the future. And the other exciting thing about the, um, about printing is that it's global now. And as somebody who prints a lot of things, these online print houses, if you've got a digital image, uh, you can find some very affordable solutions uh, that are, you know, by doing a Google and, and fun things like think about this too, like, you know, say if you have a grandson or something, a grandchild, you can make a, you know, you can print family photos on a blanket and send it as a Christmas mm -hmm. gift, you know, you're wrapped in your family's love, like here's your blanket, right? I mean, there's so many fun things that you can do, you can print photos on anything today. And so, um, and that's the, that's why that curation process is so important is to find those photos that you care about and put them and send them as gifts and you know do all sorts of fun things with them. Um, yep, it's uh, so now uh, talk about the deduplication software again. And um, I guess what they wanted to you to just explain that a little bit more. What it, what it, so what it does, so think about the times, especially when we had uh, memory cards, a lot of people too, I've done, I did this, right? You kept you kept adding, putting your memory card into your computer because you were worried, did I take those photos from my memory card? So, and then you put them up in Dropbox or whatever. So you have multiple copies of multiple copies of multiple copies, probably in, you know, Google Photos or Drop, wherever you put your photos. So this software, it's, it's artificial, it's artificial intelligence. It goes through and it's able to identify the photos that look exactly alike. And it does a really good job of that. Your iPhone actually now has that feature on it as well. But, um, and so then it will put them in a folder, you know, it'll say these photos look alike and then you can make a decision then yes or no, and then delete most of those, uh, the, the duplicates so that you're immediately, and I could ask Rachel or some of the members here that do this for a living, what's the most number of duplicates that you've deleted from a client's photo collection? It'd be interesting to know. Sometimes it can be like, they might c come in with 100,000 photos and end up, really, they only had 50,000 photos. I don't be interesting to see what they say. Oh, yeah. No, I've done it a few times. And uh, uh, Rachel says tens of thousands. <laughs> um, so but the computer um, does the work for you, which is amazing, is the computer, you're not doing it, but you're not looking at all those photos. The computer recognizes the ones that look most alike. It recognizes the faces and how they're positioned. And so, like, if you took five photos and everybody's all the same photos in the same way, um, yeah. Um, and if you imported your photos, you know, multiple times over and over again, it's going to know that you did that. Yeah. It's going to allow you to delete the ones that, those the extra photos. Um, let's see. Martin asks, can you recommend a high quality print photo to digital converter for a Mac? Do you offer sort of product suggestions like that? But he's wondering if 
it's something that he's he wants to buy. A, a print he wants to print photo. something in house. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't. I mean, Canon, I know, has been really um, we've done some work with Canon over the years. I would look at their products because I know that's been a big um, I know the product team on that, but I, I don't know right off the top of my head. OK, you know, but, um, to do it yourself. Yeah, I'll drop in a, uh, a link to the Canon photos uh, scanners, um, Martin. That That's probably a good first place to to start. Um, and let's see. Is Ria asked, is scanning expensive? I have about 300 photos that I'd like to scan. Only 300? That seems like uh, <laughs> <laughs> most people have thousands. No, it's the best investment you'd ever want to make. I mean, the prices vary. Uh, usually it's per print, uh, if it's a print. So maybe, I don't know, 35 cents sometimes to maybe 80 or 90 cents. But um, but it's it's when you think about what we paid to develop all that film and what we paid to take to buy the film, develop the film, the scanning is relatively inexpensive for what you get from that. And I would say, Rhea, I I I did two companies where I put all my photos in a box and I sent them away. I like your suggestion, Kathy, of using a photo manager because. I tell you, it was kind of unnerving, you know, in terms of, okay, when am I going to get these back? Because a lot of these companies, they they aren't necessarily, you're not talking to a person, you're just sending a box and they're just running it through their scanners. And so I really do like the idea of using a photo manager, creating a strategy, developing a relationship, probably going to, you know, spend a little bit more money, but it's probably going to be a, a much better outcome. And yeah. quite honestly, all I got is this little, you know, I got my little USB and now I don't know what to know about it. It's not like I did. Right, it. That's the thing. So the photo manager would help you think about what's yeah. the goal? What are we going to do here? What now, what can you do with that flash drive? How, what are some photo sharing options? There's like different ways you can share all those photos. So I think that makes sense. The other thing I like to talk about sometimes those, those box photo scanning, it's like the airlines now, you know, you, oh, I have this really, I can, I just did breeze airway, right? Oh, I can fly to Florida on breeze. And then it's like, oh, but you wanted to bring a carry on bag. Oh, add this. Oh, but you wanted to have a glass of something more than a glass of water. Oh, it's this, that's how they're pricing it. It starts out looking really inexpensive, but then when you're, oh, but I want them scanned at a DPI. That's a decent, oh, that's going to cost you more. So at the end, it all comes out somewhat similar in pricing, I think. Yeah, I, I, I could see how that could happen. Okay, um, let's see. As many photos are in an old sticky al albums as you remove those guidance on how to handle those. So, so as many photos as there are in the old sticky albums, as you remove them, any guidance on how to handle those? So again, Books, I would wear... Oh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. I would wear the, you know, wear the gloves and use carefully, um, you know, take them out and then put them into a container, especially if you had them in order, you know, you want to keep them in that order. Just make sure that you're placing them in the same order that you took them out of the albums. If you want to reduplicate that album someday, or you just want to um, make sure you, like I suggest using those sticky notes or, or even an index card. And so in jotting down that information, sometimes when, you know, you used to write alongside the photos, right. And so you know, you might want to, or that's where you can take a picture so that you can remember the captions that you wrote with those old albums. So those are some suggestions about that. And then throw those old yucky albums away. <laughs> and, um, and then she asks, uh, Jessica asks, uh, bulk scanning versus flatbed, and can they be stored in a bunch or would you then require tissue between them in case of the sticky residue? The sticky, you know, again, I'm going to put that on Rachel to what do you use with the sticky residue? I think there's products that you can put on that that gets rid of that sticky residue. Okay. Um, so see if she can put that in there. But as far as, um, yeah, no, so you wouldn't need the paper. Bulk, to, oh, bulk versus flatbed scanning. It doesn't really matter. Um, so that's an interesting question. I don't even know why she knows to the a bulk scanner is a feet. Probably she means that's a feeder scanner and they kind of yeah. speed through. And then a flatbed scanner means you got to pick up the lid. That Epson fast photo that is sold to the consumer arm. It's pretty, it has some real issues. It'll, it can streak easily. It needs to be kept clean. It's not that it, it's, it can cause some real issues if you're going to look at investing in that. So just be aware that you have to really work on keeping the glass clean and things. If you have lots of photos to scan, that's a bulk scanner. Um, okay. So, 
Yeah, my gut level is there's any kind of, I mean, I know what it's like putting a, a copier in a bulk copy machine with just a wrinkle in a piece of paper. If there's any kind of thing that could hang up on a bulk like residue, you probably want to stick it, lift it and stick it down. Um, and and so I knew you were gonna, we were gonna open a rabbit hole on these negatives. So can anybody scan a negative? Um, this is a little confusing. Do you just scan the negative the same way you would scan a photo document? No, it, ne negatives, you need a specific kind of scanner to do negatives. Um, okay. So it, because they have to be scanned at a much higher uh, DPI. So, so. I, again, I think one thing that I've learned on this call is, is that you're probably best, you could do some internet searches, but on that end, contact a photo manager and at least brainstorm with them. Yeah. You know, Some of them will could give you information. In the book, my book has, uh, we talk about all of that in the in the book. We goes, we have a lot of resources and, you know, there's so many great companies that we have wonderful resources with. I think some of them might be here on the call that uh, offer really great products and services as well. So it's a passionate industry. People, the people that, you know, have started businesses around this care deeply about the stories that you're trying to share and save. Great. And um, then CR says, uh, what is, do you, do you know like the recommended D DPI if somebody's scanning things? Like is Six, there- We recommend 600, which is most, like most companies will start at 300, but as a best practice, we just recommend 300. I mean, 600. It's unlikely you're gonna be blowing up those photos and you need that full 600 DPI, but just in case you ever want to, that's what you mean by the DPI. It's what the photo would look like when it's actually turned back into, you know, if you wanted to enlarge it or something. So, you know, those, some, some photos they can, like, you're not going to, we say, don't use Facebook as your photo storage, right? Because when you downloaded your photos out of Facebook and you try to print them, there's no, there's, they have not saved them at that high resolution. You can see them on Facebook, but you won't ever be able to print those photos again. Yeah. And, and that's because I think before we got on the call, I was talking about how I got all these photos in, um, uh, Google Photos, and you're like, well, you know, uh, those are not, I'm not necessarily in control of those photos, correct? Right. Or Google, you agree that there's a privacy, Google doesn't, um, I think, you know, when you agree to their terms and conditions, some some companies are better than others, and Google would be one that's going to allow, um, you know, you're, you're signing away some of your rights to your own photos when you're, if you're, we don't recommend Google as your number one photo hub. There's others much better photo hubs than that. Okay. Um, and Rachel, who's going to be speaking on May 23rd on this topic. So if we don't get through everything, Rachel's going to play cleanup. She says yeah. you can use interleaving paper, which is archival between the sticky photos. I would not feed anything that is sticky through an auto feed scanner. If you think you'll do damage to remove them, then scan them on a flatbed. So uh, thanks, yeah, Rachel, that's a good answer. for jumping in there. Uh, and that message too, just again, this could be a whole nother topic we could do, but it's on privacy, especially today. I mean, privacy is becoming such a bigger issue and also legacy planning. Like, you know, what happens if when you pass away and, you know, with your passwords and all things like that, it's becoming a very important topic. And the, we're bringing more and more training to our members as well, because we realize we're the audience that's going to be teaching the consumers about about how to think about that. So what we mentioned about Google Photos or, you know, it's just becoming a big issue today. And now with AI and the way people can change photos and things, it's just becoming more and more important that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your photos are safe and private. Okay, and then folks, uh, I know somebody, I saw something in chat uh, a little bit there that they, they jumped in late and they were wondering about all these great comments in chat. That is, will be at the recording link, all of the chat comments, all the Q and A, We'll be at the recording link, links to Kathy and her book and all that stuff too. And I'm bringing that up because we're getting close to the top of the hour. Kathy, um, can you hang on for a little bit and we'll dive through a few more of these. Um, okay, um, we I love this one. We have a newborn baby in our family, four months brand new. Photo of them sleeping, photos look almost <laughs> the same. But if you look closely, you can see where the baby fell asleep and the baby pacifiers, you know, uh, fell asleep. A little pacifier in the picture under the babies. Great memories, thinking about how hard we mothers work sometimes to encourage our babies to go to sleep. I, I think, I, I love that you're sharing that and I'm in the same boat, you know, cause I've got two children. 
but it's also one of these things, especially our firstborn, we're just snapping away. And um, there's literally hundreds of pictures. You got to sort through those things, find one that's that represents that moment in time. Yeah. It's an, and that's the thing to keep in mind. It's the moment in time and go back to that idea of the stories, right? So that message, that message you want to share about, you know, trying to get your baby to go to sleep is also the story about how much you care for your baby. You know, it's, it's all about the nurturing and the love and things like that. So over time, you know, those are the photos that you want to keep, not all of them, because you're going to keep nurturing that baby, you know, when they fall and scrape their knee, when they, uh, you know, their first day of kindergarten, right? All of those moments are coming and that you can't possibly enjoy your photos. We worry that the most photographed generation in history is at most at risk of losing their photo legacy because of the they're buried in those images. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Okay, this out. Um, and then somebody, uh, they, they thank you for your t talk about the negative scanners and that it, you need a special scanner and um, uh, and she wanted to know, should I invest in this if I've got a lot of negatives? And what my recommendation, and I bet you it's yours too, is me, have a call with one of the photo managers in Kathy's network, because I think that um, you will probably after that conversation, uh, you'll have an idea on whether it's worth. Yeah. And they won't sell you. I mean, I, you know, ethically, I don't think nobody's going to try and sell you on something. It'll give you good advice and, and help you make those decisions. There might be some way I, I'm not positive. If you're looking at a light box, if you can look at the neg, you know, the negatives, it is not inexpensive to scan negatives, but, um, there's also maybe do it over, you know, over six months where you just do yeah. a little batch at a time or a year. I mean, that's not uncommon either. Sometimes if people have, you know, 50 home movie cassettes, maybe they do 20 a month and a budget because you're on a budget and you just do it that way. So those are options that you can, that, and that's the difference between working with somebody than a mail order company. You're not going to want to mail things away every month or something like that. Okay. Um, a few questions about photo managers outside of the, um, the Mid-Atlantic region, and I'm putting a link in um, on Kathy's website, but if you go to hire a pro on her um, website, you can um, find somebody any anywhere in the world. And I, I imagine if you don't see your area, uh, you reach out to her. And we'll, we'll connect you. And a lot of members can work remotely, you know, so to, in today's day and age, uh, you don't have to be somebody right in your, if there's nobody like within a hundred miles of you or something like that, we can, we can make recommendation. You can send an email to support at the photo and we'd be um, happy to make a referral. Yep. Um, okay. And then let's see. Uh, oh, uh, Rachel. Okay. I'm, I'm going through chat now folks. And uh, I love this uh, Rachel suggestion, turn live photos off on your iPhones. I, I'm guilty of this. It, it shoots a short video um, yeah. and um, instead of just a still photo. And um, let's see, uh, let's see, I have to put the photo in the family website. Okay. Um, okay, Kathleen, if you have 15,000 plus photos on a computer or in iCloud, how do you organize those? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna, Rachel's got a tall order following you. Um, I, I hope she's, but we got a month for her Work to do it, research on some of these <laughs> questions. But let's let's table that one for next month's discussion or just reach out to a photo manager in the interim um, because I think everybody's situation. Is yeah, and it's doable. Different. The good news is it's not as hard as you think. It's just that it's just hard for the consumer, I always feel bad for the consumer. I feel like, you know what, this is my little rant on that for a minute, but then I'll let it go. But you know, when the, when the iPhone, Apple, you know, put the most amazing camera in our phones, they weren't worrying about the number of photos we were taking. For them, they love to just say, you know, can you add another, you know, for another dollar, you could add more storage, right? So that's a big money maker for all of those companies. They're not motivated to help you take less photos. It's, uh, it's like if, but what we don't realize, it's like if you were, had a closet and somebody knocked on your door and said, oh, hey, could you build another closet? Could you build another closet? You know, you would realize, I don't want to, I want to stop building all these closets. So it's not your fault that you have 10,000 or 15,000 or 100,000 photos. Everybody is in this situation. It's overwhelming. 
And, um, and it takes time and knowledge and skill to figure out how to solve this problem, which is why we have professionals now. You could Google it and do a lot of watch YouTube videos and learn, but it is, it's, so you're not alone in feeling overwhelmed. So. Yeah. And um, yeah, we were so discriminating back when we had to pay 10 cents yeah. for each uh, thing. I mean, um, I took a trip, you know, maybe, eight, but I took a trip around the world. I was fortunate in my, in the eight, you know, and I took 36 rolls of 36, sl- of 36 fold slides on it. On, I care for three months. I only took 36 rolls of film because that's all I could afford. And I carried it in a little leather pack. And I didn't even know if those pictures were coming out until I got back. I'm so glad that that's what I had to do. Cause if I went today, I can't imagine what I would have. I never, I made a, an amazing video, did some amazing things with those photos because I only had a, I only had to sort mm-hmm. through like 300 and something photos. Um, so um, it's, it's, yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, Tamara asks, can you still get film developed at the usual places like Walmart or C or Walgreens or CVS? I don't know if Walgreens or CVS, they most Walgreens might still have a photo department. I think CVS has eliminated their photo department, but you can do the mail. I mean, you can find, you can get film developed um, through other companies. Okay. And a bunch of recommendations for photo sweeper. Um, uh, people say that's a good tool for. Um, uh, we also not, we also have the photo managers Academy. Actually we have courses and we do have a small, it's not that expensive. It's under, I might be 39 or $40 on how to use photo sweeper. I forgot about that. It's, it's called the photo managers Academy. And we have do it yourself courses for people that maybe if you like to learn and you want to take a course that professional photo organizers have done. And we do have one on photo sweeper. Valerie says, I save my photos on my Mac into folders, starting with the month and year, then the occasion. It keeps them in order. And I've been making Shutterfly books from them. I, I scanned and scanned all my printed folders to start this process. Uh, good good work, uh, Valerie. I, 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 you could potentially become one of a, the photo uh, managers yeah. there. Um, uh, let's see. Arlene says, two more sessions. Digital protections and home movies. I have loads of both. Okay, uh, we, we hear you there. Um, Sam says I digitized probably fifty VHS tapes my wife's mother had, and then edited and loaded them to YouTube as unlisted. It's been wonderful for the family who has no way to see these memories, and they were stuck in an obsolete technology in a box in the closet. Great idea, Sam. And yeah. it is funny how we're probably more apt to sit there and watch a video today than to sort of go through a slide program um but but every family is different yep um and sam says he used photo bridge uh to to do that i know good people at photo bridge and let's see uh thanks for mentioning ai face recognition and crowd counting and the rest of the other details that are possible um the um uh let's see okay sam what did you use for the volume on those vhs tapes i can't decide whether to leave in the sometimes awful conversation or put music behind it so sam if you want to if you're still on uh drop that in because i don't think there's another new new company out there too you might want to check out projector app app projector app he, he was at our conference. He just created a streaming uh, app so that for your smart TV. So you load for $29.95 a year. You put all your home movies uh, you, and you can screen it on, you know, you can just go to your app on your, on your TV and watch all your home movies. I mean, it's really reasonable. So you're not using his uh, program as your store, safe storage for life of your, fo- of your home movies, but it's a great visual a way to, to access those home movies. So well, if you sign up for Kathy's Picks or something like that, we recommend new companies that we see like that. I know Artifact, I noticed, was here too. Uh, Heather's, uh, she did an amazing talk about privacy. That's uh, for our conference and uh, is going to be educating our members more on how to make sure that they understand uh, privacy issues and things. So, Yeah, and um, and folks, on that link that I put for downsizing, I um, we did a discussion with Artifacts. They're, uh, they're a great... Um, great organization and another great telling the stories about the uh these photos and things of that nature um okay thanks so much for the ideas uh sam you you are you get a gold star today you are really 
throwing a lot of great comments and and um, ideas in there for everybody. Um, our Eileen says CVS just brought, bought their developing back, but they send them out. So that's another thing with a lot of services, folks, that you got to realize is, is that it's sometimes like CVS and Walgreens is just a middleman, but at least you're talking to somebody just like you're talking to your photo manager if uh, you, you work with one of those. It's interesting that CVS came back to that because um, um, that's interesting to me. That Yeah, th th that means there's a growing need. Obviously, they, they brought, they're bringing, if they're bringing it back, it's because they see a need. And, uh, and Janie says that she recently took a role of film to Walgreens. Um, and let's see. No, life's... Okay. Um, okay, I think you know, we're, we're over an hour here and, uh, oh, let's see. Rafi says, how can we sign up for the newsletter and the tips? Oh, okay. So I'll, you know what we had it. Let me, um, let me drop that in the chat here while you, okay, um, great. in a minute, cause we have to give away another book. Um, oh yeah. Okay. And then while you're doing that, I hope I'm not going to screw you up. I'm just going to share my screen here because we got, May 23rd, we got Rachel Jenkins. She's one of Kathy's certified uh, move managers. She's also got some move manager. What am I saying? Photo managers. Um, and she's got a real life story of somebody that's gone through this. So we can hear how one person uh, did that. And then um, let me go to the wheel of names because we're going to give away another book. And... <laughs> Let's see. Our first winner was Sylvia Elias. If Sylvia, if you got turned in late, you're a winner. And then let's see who our second one is. Darla DiMauro. Oh, you know what? Do another. Uh, she's a member. So oh. uh, go ahead and do, I think she'd be happy to pass that away, okay. pass that on to somebody else. Let's let's do one that you don't, a name you don't recognize as a certified manager, because probably you need to get the book if you're certified. You would, you'd want to hire Darla. You want to. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> She's in Philadelphia. Lisa Krause. All right. Okay. All right. So I'll get those uh, to you and then we can get those out. and. Um, let me just, uh, okay, great. Um, well, Kathy. And I just dropped just so uh, in the chat, I just dropped. Um, so to sign up for my Kathy's picks, it's just once a week. And then also our uh, Facebook private photo organizing group. So people ask these kind of questions all the time. I mean, it's people doing projects and things. So we have members that are, uh, that come in and answer for those questions. So, um, those are other ways, other resources, but this has been great. I'm not surprised, Steve. It's, it's a big topic and it's a lot to cover. And um, thank you for all those that were helping in the chat. There. Well, and, and I dropped this into chat and, um, and Kim says, can you repeat the information about the privacy issues turning off and on the iPhone again, please? That wasn't about privacy. They were saying, turn off your live photos. Live. Yeah. Because okay. it's really a little mini move, movie. Privacy is something we could actually do a whole talk on, you know, just educating the consumer. It's really becoming important. And so um, it's too, too big of a topic to, we didn't even really touch on it, but just to be aware of as a, as being an educated consumer is really uh, a topic that really is important to talk about. I tell you, I mean, one of the fascinating things about, we do so many discussions on this platform and I'm just amazed at all the rabbit holes we dive down and then how you think that, hey, we're going to talk about photo organizing. And it's just as simple as one, two, three, or whatever your, your process is. But you realize that that there's just so many details in this that you would never have, have thought about. And it can, can really be, a, it sounds like it can be really rewarding if you do it the right way and less stressful, you know? Right. And that's my final, like, where I always said, nobody... Uh, ever said to me, oh, I'm so disappointed I spent, invested the time and money into getting my arc, my photo collection organized in a way that tells, that I could pass down and tell stories. I mean, it's it's a priceless process, I think, and to, um, to keep in mind the why, like I started, right, what, with knowing your why and knowing and, and setting your goal about what you want to achieve. 
And that'll help over, help you narrow away from this overwhelmed feeling because it can be really overwhelming. But at the end of the day, you know, we're a people of stories and we tell our stories through our photos and videos and the items that we care most about. And, and that's, that's what we care about. It's the connection with, with family and friends about the things that matter to us. So I just want to leave on that good note, hopefully too, and not to feel too overwhelmed by it. I love it. All right, Kathy, I hope this is the first of many and Thanks. connections with all of your, your network there. And hey, folks, everybody, enjoy the rest of your day. And if you've got a pet or a pet that you love, oh, what a great idea. Join us tomorrow idea. because we're going to talk about estate planning. A lot of times people don't put their pet in their estate plan, but then if you got your pet handy, we'll open up your camera and we'll have a fun time. All right. See y'all. Okay.